Welcome back to Mycology Exploration, where we are simply sharing what works for us, home mycology made easy. And we have received so many questions about agar and transfers and cloning. And so I am attempting to create all of these videos, short topical videos, answering your questions. And many of you requested in real time videos. So it's me, the camera, and whatever it is that we're working on. So I apologize for any shaking or any audio issues. I'm really just focused on the information and all of your questions and just delivering that to you while showing you in real time. So I wanted to thank you guys for supporting the channel and all your positive feedback. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for hitting the like button and thank you for your comments. The husband is the one who manages this YouTube channel and he reads all of your comments and answers many of them. And so I have this list from him of your questions. And first up is about agar, about burning agar or overcooking it. You do not want to overcook. It's 20 minutes at 15 PSI. And the reason is, is that you could caramelize the sugars, the dextrose. So I guess if it's water agar or you don't have dextrose or sugar, then you're good. But the recommendation is to allow your pressure cooker to cool down and vent it as fast as you can and get them out. So, so allowing your pressure cooker to release any pressure and then using a towel or hot pads or something to get them out to not burn yourself. So be careful, but you do want to remove it. Again, you want to, with most agar recipes, because of the sugar or the dextrose, it's 20 minutes at 15 PSI in the pressure cooker. And for those of you who have been following our channel, we actually have an Instapot, Instant Pot, and it's the Duo Crisp model. And it's this specific model that has a pressure cooker. It's the Duo Crisp model. And in the description of all of our videos, we have the study about this Duo Crisp pressure cooker. But 15 PSI is what you're looking for. For 20 minutes. 20 minutes. No burning, no caramelization. You want to toss it if any of that happens. It's not worth it. You're spending all this time and energy. You might as well get it right. These are a first transfer. And I wanted to show you the size of the transfer. You really want to make sure that it's small and I really try to get it in the center of the plate or the dish and it's okay if it's not. It does bounce sometimes. It doesn't always work out and that's okay. So this is what it looks like. I don't flip them over until the mycelium begins to grow and you see the white and then you could just flip it over so you can see what's happening underneath. But here you can see kind of the size of the transfer I took. And for those of you following these agar recipes, let me give you an update. So typically we do the water agar or a very light MEA with the clone. We don't work with spores anymore, but if we had to work with a spore, we would go to water agar first with the spore. And then we go to MEA followed by an MYA plate for the last. So it'd be three plates. The husband had a great idea. Let me show you. Don't worry, I'm finished using these. We don't have to keep this sterile at all. And I'm gonna clean the still air box out, the SAB. But these are clones. So this is actually, a, these are the clones. So this is the first plate, the first dish, and we use no pour jars, as you can see. And so this is a clone. You can tell because it's dark in the middle. This was a wet, a fresh mushroom. And we cut the sample, the clone, put it in the dish, allowed it to grow out, and then we actually got rhizomorphic growth in this very first dish. This is an MEA, 
the husband wanted to try MEA straight to MYA and see what happens. And so we're trying it. <laughs> and I'm really impressed with these first MEA plates. They're not totally clean, but we didn't have any major contamination, which is great. So I took all of these. We have a lot. And we'll just see if we need to do another transfer after this. And he said that we might do an MEA and then go back to an MYA if we need to. But we're going to see what it looks like with two plates. And then what we're doing is we're creating liquid cultures and slurries. We're doing an experiment. So we have these over here. that are ready to go to a liquid culture. They look really, really good. And we are experimenting with slurries. And so a slurry is just an agar plate in a larger jar where you do a transfer and then you put water in it and turn it into a slurry. And so what we're gonna do here is create liquid cultures tomorrow with these. And then we're also creating slurries, so I'll be putting transfers in the slurries. And then whatever is left over here, agar-wise, we're going to put it to bird seed because it just looks so good. And again, these are MYA dishes. These went through a light MEA to a regular MEA to an MYA. So these actually got three. This is the third. This would be the second one over here for those that are following. <laughs> and if you don't understand what I'm saying by the second or the third plate, that's okay. That's okay. So we will continue to update on this new two plate process of MEA to MYA. And we'll let you know about how the slurries are going. We are modding some new LC tops for ventilation and air holes. And so we'll share those with you as well. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments and we will get to those. We'll see you next time. Much love, friends.